All right. While well, prototyping my physics kit for my upcoming course, Robotic Drives and Physics on Jetpack Academy, I had a problem. My laser cutter wasn't quite cutting it, pun intended, when it came to these seals. The laser cutter was tending to burn the edges of the foam and stuff, so I kind of had a need for a CNC milling machine so I could cut the gaskets properly without burning the edges and hardening them. So, I found one on Banggood. This is it here, and it came in the mail. Kindly opened by Canadian Customs, who apparently didn't like the description machine. So they wanted to check it out and see exactly what the machine was. So, let's grab some tools. And let's get to work. Okay. Let's cut her open. See what we got here. Ooh. Oh yeah. There's the table and the rails. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Let's uh, careful blowing this out because this is a sandwich that apparently opens up. See any instructions in there? Ooh, switching power supply. Is that an Arduino controller? Oh, that's a. Uh... Looks like four axis stepper motor controller. Hmm. And then it looks like, oh, it's a wire hose. And then of course, the cutter head. Nice little stepper motor on there. That's actually a pretty decent size motor. It was bigger than I was expecting. I just assumed it was one of those 540 motors. That's uh, definitely bigger than a 540. Okay, this book cable, stepper motor cables. Ah, if I can even get these things out. Stepper motor one, stepper motor two, and a bunch of little itty bitty parts. going to be probably the side rails or end rails one or the other there's the side rails or the side towers and we got some roller bearings here and there's the lead screw driver nut Okay, let's see if I can find some instructions here. Okay, so here's the 3D, the CNC mill that I ordered. I got it for way cheaper than that. Let's see if they got instructions written here. Instructions and software. Assembly instructions, control software, and further information, please click here. Oh, takes me to a Dropbox folder. 
Oh, Impeccable CNC and all of what. Oh, yeah, look at this. Okay, well, let's open the PDF. Okay, so I unwrapped the package with the T slot uh, tabletop and everything, and it's got all the T slot pillars. Okay, put all those up there for now, and we got, of course, the lead screws and the ground shafts. I'm gonna, they're hardened anyway, so I doubt I'm gonna damage them, but I'm gonna carefully cut that open and try not to score anything. Get these out in the wild. Oh. If I can. Okay, let's take a look at the instructions. Pretty pictures. Okay, so I'm going to start by building the flame. Ooh, we got some tools. Woohoo! There's the T nuts. Yeah, not sure what that is, but it'll be mounts. Oh, those are quite possibly table mounts. Laser cut. Huh. Cool. At least I think that's what they are. There's the metric bolts. More metric bolts. Okay, and these will probably be the anchors for everything. Oh, it even comes with cutters. Look at that. Right on. Okay. Because I'm in the middle of a move and I can't find all my cutters. There's the lead screw nuts. What is this? Oh, that's the collet. Okay. So, ooh. I believe that is more cutters. Oh, it's the collet. The collet insert. I don't know if you can see that or not. But that's fine. We'll keep that for later. Okay, so herein lies the issues. I was talking about angle supports. Uh, it something, looks something like that. I don't see nothing like that. I don't see nothing like that nowhere. Oh, did they rip me off? It'll be here somewhere. After consultation with the Chinese, you can tell pretty quick this. Hey, look at the frame. That is not what I have the instructions for. This is a very different design. So let's go see if we can find the real instructions. Let's go to the comments. See if anybody else has noticed that, hey, these aren't the right instructions. Nope, nobody else did. Well, do we forego the instructions and just wing it? Go by the pretty pictures. Taking a look at that there PDF. So I guess I have the CNC 3018 Pro, which is very similar, but different. It's the same, only different. So I guess I'll just have to wing it because the instructions aren't going to do a whole lot. Uh, it does look like a lot of the base assembly, like the table, uh, I'm guessing is the same. No stepper motor installation has no benchmark. Okay. Whereas this one, oh yeah, stepper motor position is fixed. You don't need to adjust it. Okay. Well, I guess let's give it a whirl. We'll start with the table okay so obviously when we're looking at these one has a bearing one does not obviously this is the one that's going to have the stepper motor also because of the bolts for the stepper motor so 
I don't think there is a front and back. It all looks symmetrical to me. So let's start with those. And it looks like that is double frames on the side. Yes, it is. So that is where the double wide frames go. And they're gonna go in here like a so. I wonder if we've got a bit for my drill that'll fit those. I'll bet you I do. I'm gonna go take a look. Bye fluke! I got a bit that'll fit my drill that'll also fit the bolts. Yay! power. <laughs> I'm turn down the torque on that thing. Okay, got dimples up, dimples up. That's gonna be the up side. Ooh, should the bearing be on the outside or inside? Going by the pretty picture, it looks like it's on the inside. So let's flip that around. Oh, and you know, I just realized I did something dumb, too. If you take a look at the pretty picture, you got to put the sides on first, because those are held on by T-nuts, and the T-nuts have to slide into the T-slots. So i got to pull one of the ends off. And so looking at the pretty picture on the screen, I can see that we've got six anchor bolts. Six on each side. So there's... Six. There's another six. We're left with six left over. And for the rest, where else are we going to use those? Oh, yeah, for the bottom of the table. But we need four, six, eight, ten. We need ten for the bottom of the table. Oh, I get it. The T-slots in the bottom of the table are bigger than the T-slots in the sides. Yeah, those were a nice fit, so. Okay, well, let's go with those. I'm making an executive decision. Hopefully, I'm not wrong. In the meantime, I already screwed up, and i got to backpedal and remove one of these. Okay, so I'm going to slide six of these into place, three in each rail on each side, and I'm putting it so you can see it here. Let's see. You can see it's beveled on one side. I'm putting it the square edge out so that it locks into the T, the T guides like that. One. <laughs> Okay, and we'll put this guy back on. I don't see any way of checking for square uh, or if that's even necessary. I think it's gonna be pretty square as is. Okay, next step. Let's throw the table together or do we wanna put the sides on? Oh, what the heck? We just put those in. Let's put the sides on. Okay, so looking at the pretty pictures, we've got the stepper motor on the right-hand side, and uh, now it doesn't say how far forward to put this, 
So I'm just going to ballpark it. And we can always loosen off the bolts and move it later on anyway. So I'll just ballpark it. Stepper motor side has to go on the right hand side. I'm going to designate this. Oh, sorry. There's the front. So that means this is the right side. There's up. So this has to be the right side. There's the bearing. That's going to go on the other side. And here is. I probably should have started these bolts before I even put the T nuts in. I'm probably going to regret this. Yep, I'm going to regret it. Okay. Well, fortunately, I've got my drill driver. So I'm just going to pull this apart again, pull those out of there. Put them on the bolts first then slide it into place so if you're watching this as a build video you probably want to change your sequence of steps Why are these so hard to start? Okay, so wasn't anything I was doing. It looks like the threads are... Oh! <laughs> there are no threads. Well, that explains why it was so hard to get the threads started. Okay, keep that one off to the side. There's no threads in that one. Okay, front, top, right hand side, and looking at the pretty picture, you can see that this leans towards the back. So now let's see if we can get these slotted in. I'm not sure that this was much easier than trying to start the threads with the T-nuts in the slots. <laughs> okay. This was going good until I screwed up and I got one of the T-slot nuts upside down. So I have the taper aside to the outside. Oops, my bad. Yay. Okay, I'm just going to thumb tighten these approximately where they're going to go. I'll just thumb, thumb tighten two of them and tighten up the others at least enough so that they're not at risk of coming completely out of the nuts and having to reline everything up again. Okay, let's do the same thing for the other side now. And looking at the pretty picture, I can see that the bearing is on the inside, which makes sense. So... This is gonna, this is the left hand side. There's the, the tab on the back. So this is up. This is the left hand side. Bearing is on the inside. Beautiful. Okay, I'm just double checking. Yes, I have the tapers out on all of them. Let's see if we can get this slotted in. Okay, I'll do the same I did with the other side. I'll just hand tighten them so they're not at risk of coming out.
okay and then we'll put the front back on Ta-da! okay now that we got that let's work on the table oh <laughs> i gotta pull this off again because i gotta put in the uh slider rods and everything but that's fine i'll leave that for now and i'll work on the table in the in the meantime okay taking a look at the table you can see there's five t slots on one side three on the other i was guessing the three would go to the bottom i'm correct i uh, look at the pretty picture there and that leaves more t slots available on the top for uh tie downs for your work okay so i'm going to put it like this no i'm going to put it like this because the camera's widescreen let's pull this masking off if we can okay and i'm looking at the pretty picture i can see i'm going to designate this as the front so you've got the lead screw nut there and there's going to be the uh back anti-backlash lead nut on this side that's going to the front away from the step promoter at the back so i'll put it there now for this one we do need these guys because these ones don't fit do they oh they do fit and it looks like those are the same bolts that went on the other pieces but we don't have enough of these and i'm short one too because this one doesn't have any threads cut in it so i've only got four of those which would only do two of these i have to use these Okay, say lovey. Only problem is, will these fit the bolts? By Jove, they do. Look at that. Okay, so I'm going to save as many of these as I can uh, for the tie downs. So I will use these as much as I can. <laughs> that only leaves me four tie downs i mean it's, it's enough it's enough to do the job and these t slots are quite common so i probably even have uh some extras left over from like my 3d printer or something because my free 3d printer used these these uh t slot frames as well Okay, and like before, I'm going to just finger tighten these. Well, actually, that's going to take too long. Well, maybe not. Just put them finger tight just so they don't come off the nuts. Okay, as you can see, one of the T-nuts came off already. Oh, no, it didn't. It was just way down there.
Okay, if you're having the issue that I just had with this one, where the T-slot, there was so much, uh, the T-slot was at the very end of the bolt, and so it wasn't locking into the groove here when I was trying to tighten it. I'm having the same issue with this one. Uh, just pull up gently on the uh, bearing, and that'll put, that'll uh, force the T-nut into the groove so you can at least get it started. Oh, now the other one's doing it too. So I'm going to back this one off a bit so I can pull up on the, there we go, on the bearing. That locks the T-nut into the groove, and then you can tighten up the bolts. Okay, so I'm going to take a quick look here. If I recall, this thing is wider than it is uh, front to back. Yes, it is 300 by 18. So it is 300 left to right and uh, 18 front to back. So 300 on the x-axis, 180 on the y-axis because we have different length rods here and different length lead screws as well. So this is the front to back axis. So we want the shorter threaded rods and shorter precision ground shafts. Gently put those in and I'm gonna slide them around a little bit. Ah, I put it too tight. Gently get these lined up and carefully work that through. Boy, I didn't put those on there very tight. They sure locked in nice. Okay, here we go. And this guy. Actually, you know what? Okay, is the spring in there? No, it is not. Okay, I just noticed something. These are 3D printed. And so there's a lot of plastic hairs in there. It might be a problem. It's actually to the point. I'm going to actually, you know what? I'm going to bring this up to the camera. So hopefully you can actually see in there. You know, I don't know if you can actually see inside there. I hope you can, but you can, yeah, there. You can see the, the hairs from the 3D printing that are actually interfering with the lead screw going in there. Now, the other issue besides that, okay, so I just put the lead screw in, brushed it up against the side, and pulled it out, and that kind of cut off all the hairs, cleaned it up a little bit. Uh, the other thing is you are going to need the anti-backlash. Uh, anti-backlash nut. I only seem to have one spring. So let me take a quick look here. Yes, this one definitely has it because it even shows you in the pretty picture. Uh, there it is there. And you can even see anti-backlash spring there. Um, oh no, there's two springs there. My mistake, my mistake. Okay, there is two springs there. They are actually uh, one inside the other. Let's see if we can get these apart now. There we go. Let's see if we can do, 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 do. Yay, two anti-backlash springs. So I'm gonna put the other one in here with the other lead screw anti-backlash nut. Okay, so the threads, if it'll focus, the threads on the end are pretty messed up from the cutting. You can actually see that. So I'm actually gonna clean that up a little bit just with a, a knife or a file. Be real careful, try not to damage the threads, but just to open that one end thread up. If you got a Dremel, then probably do this in short order.
Okay, well that didn't take much work. So the principle of the lead screw anti-backlash nut is very hard to see. I'm hoping the camera will pick this up. But if you can see, the nut will move back and forth on the lead screw ever so slightly. It's only, I'm guessing, you know, a few thousandths of an inch, you know, 0 0.05 millimeters or something like that. But it's still a problem when you're talking a CNC milling machine, which is supposed to have like a thousandth of an inch accuracy or like, you know, 0 0.01 millimeter accuracy or whatever. Well, there goes your accuracy out the window. So the principle is they put two of these on the shaft and they spring tension between the two and that keeps these two apart so that there's no movement uh, because basically you will thread this one out farther than the others the two are opposing each other and it uh, unfortunately because you're you have two nuts pushing against each other on the same threaded rod it increases friction so there's that fine line between backing it off just enough to, to keep that tight but not so much that it increases the friction on the rod to the point where your stepper motor struggles to turn the lead screw okay so that's the principle there so if you will to put this in uh, I turned the nut around so that I'm feeding it in from the end I cleaned up and that's because I'm now going to feed that uh, lead screw through this lead through lead through nut here. And it's almost like it's automatic adjusting. So what's going to happen, I'm going to put this in so this seats in the slot. And I'm going to be pushing against the spring. And so in order to accomplish all that and start threading it in, it's going to almost automatically set the tension on the spring. So back this way out so that the threads aren't sticking out very far and then feed her in get that seated into the slot and then slowly turn the lead screw and get it threaded into the other uh, the other uh the other one i'm gonna back that off because that missed missed a tooth and it started pushing I'm going to rotate backwards until I feel it drop into the thread. I'm pushing pretty hard this direction. No, I'm not feeling it. So, But it is threading in there. And it is locking in here. So that's the main point. Is to get those two fighting each other under spring tension. Yeah. Because that's actually doing a really good job. Now to take up slack this way, it also has to fight the spring. And that's kind of the anti-backlash principle. Is to uh, fight that backlash. Okay. Uh, let's lead that, feed that all a long way through. And then these guys are threaded on the ends. Yes, they are. And of course, you've got two of these joiners, one with a wide end, a wide hole on one side and narrow hole on the other. It only fits one way and that's the wide hole goes over the uh, threaded rod. I'm gonna need to back off the, oh, it's the smaller Allen key. Oh, it's actually threaded too. Wow. Okay. Professional. Oh, it's not threaded. There's two Allen keys. There's two uh, set screws. I thought it was threaded. Maybe it is threaded. Yeah, it is threaded. Slick. Okay, so thread that on there. And then set the Allen screws so they're nice and tight. And then the other end is going to go onto the shaft of the stepper motor. And in my 
Robotics Learn by Building series, we talk about the importance of backlash because in robots, and this is basically a robot, uh, repeatability is very important. In fact, in robotics, repeatability is more important than accuracy. On a milling machine, um, I would dare say accuracy is more important than repeatability because you're actually going to be measuring the movements and everything. So, okay, once we got that in place, you're going to have to haul out your frame again and undo the mistake I did. So if you're just tuning in now, hopefully you didn't do this and put this front on <laughs> like I did again because I'm going to pull it off now. <laughs> Okay, front comes off. The lead screw joiner, because that's going to the stepper motor. There's the hole for the stepper motor in the back. Obviously, that's going to the back. This is going in place. You know what? I may very well have been able to put all this together without taking that front off, because the bolts are going to go through the end. These should fit between the frames but I think this is going to make it easier anyway. Um, so anyway, I made my choice. I'm sticking with it. And of course, you had not figured it out already, same uh, bolts go in through the hole in the middle and they go into the end of the precision ground shaft. And you may have to move these around, of course, because uh, I've just randomly set them approximately in place. I'm going to have to adjust them and everything. I can't even get this bolt into this shaft. So I will finish putting the front on and tightening that back up again. <laughs> Okay, so these shafts will go, should fit in between. The threaded rod, of course, goes into the bearing. And then these guys are all going to need to be loosened so they can move around freely, basically. You don't want them so loose that they're drop, dropping the T-nuts off the end, but you want to be able to move them around. It's a tight squeeze, of course, but it will fit in between the frames. Unfortunately, putting it sideways means you can't see it on the camera. But putting it sideways is the only way I can seem to get the uh, bolts in through the holes and into the ends of the shafts. I'm going to try and turn it upside down after this move. Okay, that's really tight. I'm not sure why. <laughs> Almost like it's cross-threaded, but I'm sure it's not. Okay, well, I will just leave it. So I will turn this over. I've got a bolt in the end of this shaft here already, so I will attempt to put one in here. Watch your fingers, because that table's going to slide around a lot. Yeah, see, that one went in nicely. For some reason, this, the end on this shaft, it just does not want to receive a bolt. I'm not terribly sure why, so I'm going to pull the other bolt out and take a quick look at it. Oh yeah, I can see them. There's uh, mangling the threads going on. So anyway, it's the threads is the problem. I'm sure once I get the bolt uh, anchored on this end, I'll just reef that in with the with the drill driver and uh, it'll go in. Won't come back out so easy, but it'll go in. Okay, so right to left, you're going to want to get the table centered approximately, sliding back and forth to the right and left. Um, doesn't look like it'll matter 
how centered it is as long as it's not uh, hitting anything as it slides back and forth in this direction. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to actually mount the uh, stepper motor here because that will help me position everything. Everything will be locked into place and all I have to do then is just go in and tighten everything down and it'll do all the work for me then. The pretty pictures on the Banggood page said something about uh, the stepper motors wind up indexed so you can't turn them now I can see in that picture right there I can see there's the wiring tab so I can see that the wiring tab goes up it said it's indexed but anyway that answers my question regardless of whether it's actually indexed or not okay it just says the stepper motor position is fixed you don't need to adjust it okay Oh, and I guess, oh, I see, they were adjustable before, and now they're not. Okay, cool. Well, there's the connector. There's the top. So it goes in like a so. And that uses the small bolts, I believe. Or does it use the big ones? Let's find out. Oh, that definitely uses the small ones. <laughs> This uses the medium sized Allen key. So I'm going to get that guy. And it's only got one position, so set the Allen bolts home, lock her down. Okay, with the stepper motor in place, okay, find the flat spot on the shaft because that uh, you want that lining up with one of the Allen screws. I'm gonna back those off. You can pull one out if you want, because by the time you back it off, it's pretty much out already anyway. And where's the other one? There's the other one. So line that flat spot on the shaft up with one of the uh, Allen, Allen screws in the joiner. Line her up, go ahead and set her home. Tighten it up, turn it over, do the other side. <sighs> okay, there we go. So now with this locked down, the lead screw is centered from the stepper motor to the bearing. So you know that this is centered left to right. So now you can slide the table along the bolts until you get it approximately centered. I'm gonna turn this around so I can see right to left. Um, I'm not too worried about whether it's perfectly centered or not, but also now because the precision ground shafts are also held in place by bolts, that also means uh, left to right, they're also centered. So. And center all down. Oh, yeah, with all those locked down, I can now um, tighten up the shaft bolts. And because the shaft is smooth and you don't want to grab these with pliers or anything. So what you want to do in this case, for example, this bolt is having a hard time going in because the threads are bunged up. No big deal. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten this end up and have this bolt do the work. So I'll tighten up that bolt. Hmm. That one's really tight too. Okay. Well, we got no choice then. I'm going to have to hold on to one of the bolts with the Allen key and use the drill on the other end because you don't want to mess up this shaft as precision ground rides on these very nice ball bearings 
and uh, any scoring in there is going to mess up your uh, your bearings riding over that shaft. So I'll use my drill and I'll hold on to the other end while I drive that in. Ugh, if I can. Wow. Okay, that one's set. Now that that one's set, it'll hold the shaft and everything uh, while I work on this one for the simple reason that uh, this will have to turn the shaft, which will further tighten the bolt on the other end, adding more friction. So this should just go in. Nope. It must have just been spinning on the other end of the shaft. So what I'm going to do, just to keep it from doing that, I am going to hold the other end now. Actually, I'll go this way. So you can sort of at least see some of what I'm doing. I'm going to hold this bolt here with the Allen key and then tighten the other end with the drill driver. And hopefully I can hold it. Oh, my battery is dead. Wouldn't you know it. All right. So basically, as you can see, the bolt is still sticking out. I'm not going to worry too much about that. Let's see if I can get that so the camera can see it. I'm not going to worry too much about that. It keeps the shaft centered. That's what's most important. The shaft is actually pinched between the front and the back panels. So, eh, I'm not too worried. So there we go. This is all set up. And as you can see, the table now goes forward and back according to the stepper motor. Oh, that's nice. Squeaks a little bit though. I wonder what's squeaking. And where and why. Because <laughs> that'll be irritating once this thing starts going. But I'm going to have to oil it up later on anyway. So, okay, let's work on the headstock assembly. Okay, so we've got the exact same setup we did before. There's the slot for the anti-backlash lead nut. There's the other lead nut. So it'll have a spring as well. We're going to fight these two, uh, have these two fighting. And I'm just looking at the end of the lead screw where they cut it. It's actually better than the other one was. I'm guessing that'll actually just thread right in. Without any monkeying. Yep, yeah, it did. So that goes in pretty cleanly, so I won't worry about cleaning that up. Uh, put the other anti-backlash lead screw nut on there. Okay, so the spring is on, and I now push that into the appropriate hole. Get that lead screw nut seated in there and then thread it through if it'll let me okay there it goes okay this is all the way through i've got these sides slightly loose and of course the Precision ground shafts, the long ones, now go through here and here, and these slide bearings here. Those are really nice bearings. And so now, it'll just be a matter of uh, putting the... Where do these go? I see, I see, okay. So, I have not put the T-slot bracket in the back, I am uh, so I can move these two. And I'm going to put the, if I can, I'm trying to put the lead screw through the bearing of the end. I may need to, okay, get these two apart, get it lined up. And I'm just going to push the lead screw. Huh, that lead screw does not want to go through that bearing. I'm not sure why. That's all it's doing. There it goes. Okay, so now we got those in place. Same bolts as before. Go into the ends of the shafts through the appropriate holes. So basically you can see, whoops. 
you can see I've got the shafts immediately above and immediately below the hole for the stepper motor right there. So immediately above, immediately below. And just like before, I'll just get them started. Oh yes, that's right. I forgot. I've got these being able to slide forward and back still. They're still loose enough. <clears throat> or at least were loose enough. It's tightened up. I need to slide this forward or back, but it's too tight. There we go. That was the one. That was the one. Okay, so try and get this, these two sides lined up front to back approximately. What I'm going to do, I'm going to move this all the way back. Although there may be, there should be some limit switches getting put on here somewhere that the table will hit uh, moving front or back. I don't see any limit switches. So I wonder if it's going to have any. You know, I don't see any. Are there any in here? There might be some on the controller board. Let me take a look. I sure don't see none. Okay, so there is no limit switches to worry about. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to move this table as far back that way as I possibly can. And you'll see why in a second. I'm just gonna, I'm just turning the, uh, turning the shaft to get this go all the way back until it bottoms out. Actually, it's not gonna even gonna bottom out. Wow, I'll get some awesome amount of travel there. Okay, that just bottomed out. I'm gonna back it ahead. Oh, a half a turn on the shaft or so, just something so it doesn't hit that back board and. Um, Okay, so what's going to happen now? I'm going to turn it on the side. Uh, let me turn it on this side. So here you can see the shaft. This is where the collet and the cutter is going to go. And um, obviously, it's got to line up with, uh, it's got to line up be over the table. You don't want it going off the table. So Actually, about where that is, is probably a good spot. So I'm probably going to just square these up so that uh, this, the two towers are uh, exactly the same distance from the back. And I'll probably just send the bolts home and just lock everything down and uh, go with that. Because I think that's actually a good spot. I'm thinking if I turn this turn the uh, the lead screw for the Y axis all the other way. What I'm looking for is to make sure that the table can't actually move farther than the cutter. Uh, or sorry, so the table won't move so far that the cutter will actually leave the table. Although even if it does, it's not the end of the world. Um, let's see, we'll go a little bit farther. Okay, now, if you recall, so that's bottomed out there. I'm going to turn it back a little. So we're actually off the table a little bit. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to move this ahead just ever so slightly until it is over, until that shaft is straight over basically the back edge of the table. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I am going to lock this side down first at least one of these nuts, is that the right one? Yeah, that's the right one. At least one of these nuts just to hold the position. But I'm actually going to do, uh, yeah, I'm going to do them all. And what I'll do is I'll then measure that with a ruler from the back to the back of the edge of the pylon or the tower or whatever you want to call it. And then I'll make the right hand side match. And then that way I will know that everything here is square and uh, we can go with that then. Uh, okay, so uh, the reason I did that was because now I've now gone the full extent of how far the table will travel. And if you recall, 
when I had the table all the way back, the spindle was actually still still inside the table by quite a bit. So I knew I could move this forward and it'll probably be a nice edge to edge movement now uh, that is capable of. So I think that'll work really good. Okay, uh, let's see. I'm going to put the Come on. Well, I gotta hand it to them. That's a good little bearing in there. But the uh, lead screw does not want to slide in that bearing very well at all. Ah. Now these are probably at a square, is probably what's going on there. So what I'll do, sure. I'm gonna measure it and tighten this down just slightly. I still need to get these guys in behind so I still need to be able to uh, actually what I will do is I will put the bolts in just loosely so it holds them in place then they are in place at least and ready to go and then I can square it all up and tighten it down Okay, going from the back edge of the left pylon to the back edge, the very back edge, got almost exactly five centimeters. It's like, uh, there's a lot of reflection there. I'm having a hard time seeing here. It looks like about, let's go like this. I get 48 millimeters. So I'm now going to move this one so it is. 48 millimeters. Oh, that's pretty close, but not quite. Okay, now, tighten these guys down. Because they have six bolts on there, there's no way I can get that in there, is there? Oh, yes, I can. Okay, so I'm going to put this on its side so you can see me working on it here. Oops, wrong side. tighten all these guys up I'm going to go ahead and send them all home set them nice and tight the only thing that is in place is the stepper motor and it doesn't need any play action probably just as best I'm not using the drill for this part Okay, now watch it, that is gonna slide back and forth because there's nothing holding it right now. And might as well tighten up the precision ground and shaft bolts as well. So, let's get the other stepper motor mounted and let's take a look first at the pretty pictures. Uh, see if we can see where the wire I believe, I don't know about you, but it looks, so. Oh, wait, no, that's the wrong one. This is the motor I'm looking for right here. Oh yes, if you look way off to the right hand side, right there, you can see the lip on the back edge. So the connector has to go towards the back when it goes into place. Okay, I'm going to need to get that out of the road because it's actually impacting the shaft. Where did those screws go? There they are. Okay, if you're watching this before you assemble yours, um, I'm going to recommend you actually mount this stepper motor earlier on in the game. It's not bad, I can get in there and stuff, but uh, it would have been nicer if I had done it earlier where I didn't have all this other stuff in the road. reason this last bolt last bolt hole 
doesn't want to thread in. I don't think it's an alignment issue. Almost like there's something in the uh, the threaded hole in the stepper motor. Oh, wait. I think I may have just gotten it. Or maybe not. Okay, which one is that? That is kitty corner opposite of the... I'm going to pull that out of there. Take a look. I'm quite certain I could use it without that bolt. Without any issues at all. It's got three other bolts holding it into place. I don't think it's going anywhere. I don't think it's going to lose position. But it'd be nice if I could get the fourth bolt in there. And I'm curious as to know. Wow, there's something in there. Okay, I don't know if you can see this. But there's actually something in that hole. Almost looks like a broken off bolt or something. Okay, I'm going to see if I can fish that out of there. <sighs> okay, I don't know what that was, but it's out of there now. Let's see if we can get a bolt to go in there now. I'll start with that hole. Seeing as how that's the problem one. Yep, there it goes, right off the hop. Okay, right on. We are in business. <laughs> Okay, so I'm getting them tightened down, and as you can see, this is why I'm recommending you put this on before you put all this on. I did not. So you can do whatever you want, but uh, hopefully you're watching this before you assemble yours. And then just like before, you've got one end that's apparently threaded. I don't see any threads in there. Oh, wait. Looking at the wrong end. Well. Nope. I don't see any threads in there. So it was just the... Uh, just the set screws, I guess, that were threading into the... The lead screw. Eh, whatever. So I'm going to go ahead and put these guys on the lead screw. Tighten down the set screws. And then once you got that tightened, uh, don't forget, loosen off the set screws on the other end as well, the motor end. And then slide her all over. Where's that flat spot? There's the flat spot on the shaft. I'm going to line that up with one of the set screws in the, on the coupler. Boy, that's hard to get in there with the, <laughs> with the Allen key. It can be done. <laughs> oh, hey, I can turn it with the... Uh... Alrighty. We are all locked and loaded in that regard. Let me just check something out here. No, that looks good. I thought maybe these were uh, under tension. Oh, that just goes beautifully. Boy, does that ever slide nice. Okay, so. All set up, locked and loaded in that regard. Now, we got to mount the computer control. Which, I believe, goes back here. Yes, it does. And guess what? That probably gets mounted with... These guys, which means I have to pull this off to get in there. <laughs> uh, I'm an idiot. Oh, well. Let's find out. Take a look at the pretty pictures. Yeah, that's sure what it looks like. Where's that computer? There's the computer.
Yeah, that's exactly what they want you to do. Okay, so hopefully you're watching this before you put yours together. And uh, <laughs> you'll know to put in your uh, uh, T-nuts into the slots beforehand. Now, I've got a problem. I've really only got one left. Because uh, this one doesn't have threads. And... There is no... Uh, let me check something real quick here. Because they may have actually provided... Oops. Bolts that fit into the T-slots. Nope. As you can see, that bolt does not lock into the T-slots. I can spin that freely. So. Hmm. So the issue is I do not have any more T-slots or T-nuts to put in there except for one of these and the these guys here. Now if I've only got two hold downs that's fine. Three or four would be better. Um, I could use just two and get the computer mounted which I think is what I will wind up doing. So when you're looking at the pretty picture, you can see that the computer is right next to the stepper motor on the back panel. So, I guess I will use two of them. Much sadness. Okay, so I'm going to have to undo my work now. I gotta... Actually, I imagine... Yes, I imagine what I can do is just loosen these guys off. Uh, loosen these ones, pull these ones off completely. I can probably slide those out. Or at least slide them up far enough that I can get the nuts in. And not have to actually disassemble everything. We'll loosen these guys off as well, just on one end. Just so I got a bit of play. Oh yeah, easy peasy. Oh! These big ones don't fit. So, you have to use the small T-slots. I should have known that. And this one doesn't have any threads. So, I got a problem. I could swap out one of the ones on the bottom of the table. So in the meantime, I will slot that one in there. I think that's what I'll have to do. I'm going to have to uh, pull off one of these guys. I might as well go with this one right here. Is that a big one? That's a big one. Oh wait, no, I want a small one. There's a small one right there. I want a small one, and I'm gonna swap it out for a big one. Okay. Operation Transplant has been successful. Let's slide one T-nut into that one, and one T-nut into this one. Look at that. Easy peasy. I didn't even have to pull everything off. Right on. Okay, so I'll put those bolts back in. I could probably even tighten everything down again, although I'm leery to because maybe there's something else I've forgotten. Okay, now, <clears throat> uh, 
Let's take a quick look at the pretty reference picture. Find out which way up that is supposed to go. I do see in the corner, I see a big blank area on the circuit board. And looking from the back, that's the bottom right-hand corner. Looking from the front, it's the bottom left corner. Let's see if we've got another picture from the back. I don't think we do. We do not have another picture from that. Oh, wait, there's more down here. Only one. Okay, well, I've still got the masking on mine, so I can't even see the, uh, the board. However, where are the wires going? Looks like they're going in the end. Okay, after referencing all the pretty pictures and the PDF for the 3018 non-pro version, <laughs> nothing seems to describe which way this can go. So, uh, I'm going to make an executive decision. If I put it this way, the USPA connection... For the computer, points down. Uh, the power connection also points down. That would be okay. I think I'll do that. So I'm going to orient it in this direction. And I'm going to put... Uh, because I only have the two T-nuts now. And that's loose. What are we supposed to do there? Oh, we're supposed to use these ones. Ah! Okay, I'm supposed to use the silver nuts, the shorter. I only have two T nuts, so I'm going to put one in the bottom left hand corner, one in the bottom right hand corner. to get El Felipe screwdriver out. Felipe, where are you? There's Felipe. It's actually the wrong size screwdriver, but that's doing the job nicely anyway. Take that down. Okay. Now, let us run some wires. Here is the problem. Uh, I don't think I can read any of the... Oh, they are. They have a marking. Okay, I'm going to get my phone, take a close-up picture. See if I can make out which connector is which on the circuit board. Okay, back here in the Dropbox folder that they provided, they do have a controller board wiring JPEG. So let's take a look-see. Uh, this is not letting me zoom in. Uh, it should be okay. And of course, this board is different than the one I have. Pretty obvious where the spindle motor goes. It's a big green connector and it matches the spindle motor connector. So that one's pretty obvious. And going by the connector labels, seems pretty obvious which one is Z. Well, there's the Z axis and the there is only one Z connector, and that's the bottom one on the computer. It's marked Z1, so, and the connector does only go one way. And just make sure the two little nibs are pointing to the front, or uh, they line into the two slots, and then they go in like so. Now, it does say X1 and then Y1 and YR. I'm not entirely sure what the YR is because there is no, normally I'd just say there's a limit switch somewhere. 
So I got the extra cables that came in the little baggie for the stepper motors. Pretty straightforward. They only go in one way and the stepper motor just line up the... Uh... Oh, wait. Uh, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, so one end of the cable has six pins going to the uh, stepper motor. The other end only has four pins which go to the computer. And there is only one X connector, so that one I guess is pretty simple. Uh, this is the X axis, left to right. So I will plug that one into the X1 connector. Uh, the Y connector, I don't know, I'm guessing. So again, Y connector, pretty straightforward. Only well, plugs in one way, plug in the six pin into the stepper motor. And then I'm going to guess that that's supposed to go to Y1, which would be this one. And again, it only plugs in one direction. I'm guessing, but uh, unfortunately, all they have is a pretty picture. And I don't know what that YR is for. Oh, uh, that'll be Y rotation axis. So that'll be like uh, another axis you can add, which would be... Oh, perhaps turning the head, uh, for example, I'm guessing, but I don't really know. Okay, so these two connectors on top, uh, or what, <laughs> what's in my top, they're just, uh, they just have notes on them. And I'm assuming that those are power for things like the uh, laser engraver. So you have a, a laser you can get for this because, uh, again, as we, we discuss in the, the robotics program, when we go to build our 3D printer, um, it's, all, it's all basically the same electronics and mechanics. And so all you're doing is you're swapping out the head. In this case, it's uh, a big DC motor and uh, it just spins a tool that cuts it much like a Dremel. Uh, but you can swap that out and replace it with a laser for engraving or laser cutting. Or you could swap it out for a hothead and make it turn it into a 3D printer. Or uh, what's some other examples you could do with it. Um, anyway, you get the point. Um, it's uh, it can be it's multi-purpose. Okay, now that we got all the wiring in place, let's make it look pretty. Want to keep all the wiring nice and uh, clean. And neat. Now, bear in mind, this guy uh, moves all over the place, so this will uh, this will be what they have the um, undoubtedly have the cable harness for. So there's your cable harness. It's just a flexible tube, basically. And uh, well, yeah, it's going to be a pain to put on. Oh well, okay, here goes nothing. So basically, you gotta start feeding it in. Um, yeah, I wonder if we can do that. Because of these big ugly connectors on the end, it's not like we can feed it through the tube. So I think the only way you're gonna be able to feed this through is to actually, you know, spiral it on. So basically, once you get it started, you just uh, keep working it around and basically spread that. It's almost like wrapping it around the wires because you can see it split in a helical, helical fashion and you just move it around the wire. It's going to be a pain. <laughs> Not going to lie. <laughs> I'm going to unplug this to make it easier. So it's hard to see what's going on here. I zoomed in so you can hopefully see what I'm doing here, but you can see the helical spiral. And if you twist it, it opens it up, right? So you can open that up. And basically, if you put the, you could take either the wire and put it around the tubing or put the tubing around the wire. And then once you got it twisted, 
around each other if you back twist that to open up the split then whoops I missed it there we go then it can go around and around and you keep doing that until you got to physically wrap it around okay Okay, once we get to that point, I'm going to cut it with scissors. Okay, there we go. So now, that's keeping that all together nice and neat. So bearing in mind that this moves right and left, all the way over to the right, all the way over to the left, um, you need to be able to have this cable tied down and keeping everything neat, except, oh, here, let me plug this back in. If I can find the connector again. Okay, so that actually, even just like that, is not bad because this will uh, go all the way right and all the way left. So even like that is not bad. Uh, if you want, you could put one of those fancy wire ties right there and hold it. I'm going to. I'm just going to put it around good old zap straps by the way these things these little zap straps that seem so harmless are quite deadly and i mentioned this in my online robotics course because these things are permanently locking and what happens is if kids get a hold of these um, you could also put them end to end end to end and uh, further that, you can also get bigger ones. And so once you feed this through into there, it locks and you can't pull it out. And there's been kids who get these around their necks just playing around. You know, they're, they're harmless little things. Put it around their neck and it gets tightened up and now they can't breathe. They can't pull it off. It's a real pain to cut it. Uh, when I was teaching at the high school, we had one kid who thought it'd be real funny to uh, put one of these around the finger of one of the girls. Uh, completely cut off circulation. She was panicking. Uh, her finger was turning purple and all kinds of nasty cutter colors. And of course, I couldn't find my cutters anywhere. And then by the time we did, trying to dig into the swollen portion of the, the finger, you know, um, the seemingly harmless thing can actually cause quite a bit of harm. So be aware of that. Okay, so those guys nice and neat now. Let's deal with these guys. These guys don't actually go anywhere, these wires. So all you have to do is just zap strap them, uh, you know, keep them nice and neat. They only sent, looks like they only sent three zap straps, which is fine. I guess that's enough. I'll, uh, I do have more. In fact, I have more right behind me. So maybe what I'll do is after I consume these ones. So all I'm doing is I'm putting these on the, uh, on the back plate. I'm being careful to stay away from, to not put them around moving parts, you know, like the, the, uh, lead screw or anything like that. Sounds silly, but it's actually really easy to do. And conveniently, I happen to have a whole mess more. So I'm going to 
haul them up and put them to good use. Yeah, let's go red. And all I'm doing is just sab strapping the wires together to uh, just keep them neat. That's all. So the nice thing is during course three or course four in the robotics learn by building series where we actually design and build a 3d printer they all use the same mechanics and electronics so uh, you can depending on what you want to do you can uh, design your 3d printer so it's extra strong the only difference between this and the 3D printer is that this frame is quite a bit stronger because the stresses uh, caused by the cutter are surprising. And uh, whereas a 3D printer head, there are no lateral stresses, basically. It's just, uh, oh, I did have another zap strap in there. Look at that. But that's okay. I like red. There we go. All right. There we go. All set up. Might as well put the collet on too, I guess while you're here. So this is what they call a collet, in case you didn't know that. Um, this is basically the tool, or the part that holds the tool. So on the Dremel, uh, if you know what a Dremel is, this, you know, this is the part that you, know, you, you unthread it, put your uh, cutter bit in there, and then you tighten it up on the cutter bit. Well, this mounts onto the motor shaft, just a couple set screws, so loosen them off. Is that the big one or the small one? It's the small Allen key. Wait, no, that is the big one. The medium sized one, I mean. So this is the small Allen key. Oh yeah, there we go. That's a tight fit. I'm not sure that that's the right Allen key. No, I think it's gonna work. But that's a really tight fit in those Allen screws. Okay, so, yeah, like so tight. I'm sure that's the wrong size Allen, Allen key. <clears throat> so if you have a set of Allen keys, that would be beneficial because chances are good you'll have this Allen key size, whatever size that is. <laughs> this one obviously isn't. Okay, so get those out. Again, find the flat spot on the motor, motor shaft. I'm assuming there's a flat spot. Oh, well, maybe there isn't. There might not be a flat spot, in which case you don't have to worry too much about it. I do not feel a flat spot. Okay, so this goes on to the motor shaft, like so. Uh, you want to make sure it's not tight, tight against there, because that moves a little bit, and then it'll be rubbing against the motor uh, frame. So you want to back that out. It's okay to bottom it out and then just back it off, so you just got a bit of a gap in there. Now... This is an issue, if there's no flat spot, then you're relying on the, uh, the tension you're putting on the set screw, but this Allen key is the wrong size. So you gotta put it really, really tight, but the Allen key is the wrong size. Well, I'll do my best. Okay, well, that's fitting in there pretty good. And I would use the right angle on the Allen key for these. You're gonna want these really tight, as tight as you can get them. And I can't even get that in there. Oh, there we go. There we go. Okay, so it is the right size. It's just really hard to get in there. Okay, once that's in there nice and tight, I'm just gonna grab one of these. I, I don't know what these cutters are. Uh, so when you get cutters, this is this is typically what you find. Um, they come in a protective rubber coating or a sleeve. Okay, so that one is an engraving bit. It's actually tapered, so it'll cut like a V groove, but whatever. 
whichever one you want, grab it, and then you just loosen off the collet and put it. Oh, sorry. I believe we are missing. That was the thing I showed you earlier. So you can get different. Um, yeah, it's missing the actual locking part. That's what comes in this yellow part here. You can get these in different sizes. And I think you can figure them out pretty easily. I'll show it up close up on the camera so you can see. So basically, as you can see, it's tapered. So this will go in towards the motor in that direction. And so what happens is you tighten the nut, it pushes it in, and it pushes it into the taper, which squeezes all this tightly around the shaft. And so you can get these with different size holes for different shaft sizes. So you take your call it, slide it in, and then the threaded locking nut just goes on there, like so, and then you take whichever bit it is you're going to use <laughs> and carefully put it in the hole while this is loose. Sometimes, as in this case, it's even worth it to actually pull the collet out Put this in beforehand because it's actually such a tight fit and then I can put this through the nut and into place. These can be a uh, uh, little finicky to use sometimes. Um, in fact, one strong recommendation I can make, uh, and I say the, this with Dremels as well because Dremels have the, the same fitting. So that cutter bit, wow, that's tight. That's tight already. Um, that cutter bit, there's no tension on that. That was already tight. That cutter bit, if I just push it as far as it will go, and now I tighten this up, what happens is, if you remember, it's, it's pushing on the wedge, right? So it will actually bottom out the, uh, the bit on the back end over here. And so what happens is you loosen this off and everything is now jammed against the back here. So a little tip, if you take that bit, once you've got it in the hole, if you, if it's long enough, this one isn't, I can tell already it's not bottoming out, but if you bottom it out and then hopefully you can see this on camera, I'm going to pull it out just ever so slightly so it's not bottomed out against the bottom. Now I'll tighten it up. Later on, when I got to remove that bit, I loosen this off. If that thing's jammed in there, I cannot literally push in on it. And what that'll do is that will spread this end of the collet and it'll open it up and release it. So it'll, uh, the pin will actually act, uh, act to break the lock. Whereas before you couldn't do that if it's bottomed out. Alrighty. And then you hold on to this and tighten this when you're ready to go. Okay, I think I'm gonna call that it. There we go. I am, uh, actually, I'm pretty excited to try this out. Uh, cute, beautiful little tabletop unit, nice size. I'm not, uh, I'm not needing a whole pile. I mean, I'm sure it'll do metal, do light metals and stuff. Um, I'm not really needing to do that. Uh, I need to uh, uh, prototype and mass produce my physics kits, which is all either plastic, uh, like HDPM or, or HDPE, or uh, EP, uh, EDM foam. Is it EDM foam? Anyway, craft foam, uh, thick craft foam and stuff. So you lock your stuff down here and then this moves around moving the table and the y-axis as well as this stepper which moves the cutter head up and down and so I'm only cutting light stuff so this will be just beautiful for what I want to do I'm sure and uh, in fact it's already given me some ideas for some changes that I'll make to the kit before I start shipping it out uh, but uh, what I'll do this this will complete the build video 
and I'll do uh, another video on connecting to the computer, firing up the software, because I've never used this uh, Gerbil Control software before, and uh, give it a shot and see how it all works out. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, remember, like the video if you've got that moment, and uh, feel free to subscribe. I'll hopefully do some more reviews like this, uh, or uh, check out the Science Shorts, which will also be on this channel. Uh, the Science Shorts are just a series of short videos on science and tech, various experiments and projects you can do at home. And uh, anyway, have yourself a great day. Thanks for watching.